Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 6. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abizir. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. Oh, we thank you for your sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Judges 6, 11, And the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the clan of Abizir, Gideon's son of Joash, was threshing wheat, threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. Go with me. I'm just going to skip through this because we need to get an altar tonight. Skip over. Right there. Back, back Tracy, right there. When I went to prayer before I, Monday night, before I could even get a word out, before I could even ask the Lord to speak to His beloved or His servant, immediately the Holy Spirit, when I bowed in the secret place, He said, you have maxed out the harvest in your current position. You have maxed out in your current position. Gideon, you know the story, the Midianites, and there was probably 60 to 70 miles worth of acreage or more as the, as the teaching shows us that the Midianites would destroy the crops and the cattle and everything. And they would steal from the people of God because the people of God had worshipped idols. They had not obeyed the Lord. They had idols and they were worshipping idols. And so Gideon found himself in the moment he found himself in a moment here that he was threshing weed in a wine press immediately holy spirit monday night took me to his position and he said gideon was never going to gain any more here period he had maxed out his harvest he had maxed out the possibility of harvest in this position that's why god came by the power of his spirit and pulled him out of the wine press. Because God had a greater harvest for Gideon and the people of Israel to enjoy. A greater harvest for them to be about. I can't help but think about the current position of our lives and of this call. And you see, Gideon was pulled out personally. He was pulled out personally before he was pressed into corporately. What's going on in our lives right now and what's happening in Samantha and I's lives right now is we are being moved personally in position. God has come to our house personally. He has come to our house personally and He's beginning to move us out of the position that we were currently in because we have maxed out. We have sustained long enough in that position. So what I can tell you as the servant of God of this house tonight, I can tell you that personal Position movement is coming to your life. Will you pour out? Or will you cling to what has been your peace? That's the question tonight. Will you pour out or will you cling to what has been your peace? You're fixing to get challenged in ways that you never imagined. What did Gideon do? 
mighty hero. I'm sending you. I'm with you. Gideon says, wait just a minute. Let me go get an offering for you. Let me go get a, a go. Let me go get what I can bring and bring back to you. Let me go get what I can bring and bring back to you. If you read the, the story, if you read Judges 6 in the story, if, if you read it, it will show you that the Midianites had joined with other peoples and they had devastated the land to the place where the people of God were in starvation. Starvation. So it was a big deal when Gideon went back to his place and brought what he brought. It was a huge deal. They were to the place of starvation and it was a huge deal when God came, Gideon said, let me put this, let me pour this out before you. Let me pour this out before you. It was a huge deal. It was everything that he had been working for and everything that he had held on to for his sustainment, for peace in his family. Amen? I'm just skipping around this thing because I think we need to move back into worship. Judges 6, 22 through 24. Go with me. Right there. When Gideon realized that it was an angel of the Lord, he cried out, O sovereign Lord, I'm doomed. I've seen a, an angel of the Lord face to face. What happened is Gideon went and got what he had that he had been holding to, that had been his peace, that he had held to for his sustainment, and he poured it out before the Lord. That which you have held to personally, which has been a measure of peace now, poured out before God releases into a peace that you have never imagined. If you continue to cling to what you believe, it's, my God, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. He's fixing to challenge you in ways that you say, I can't pour that out. That is built up to sustain me. He came to my house over the last 10 days and said this, that you are so close to completing. He says, pour out before me. That's not your sustainment. That's not your peace. I am Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. Amen. If it's come to my house, it's coming to your house. Amen. Samantha and I have always walked about two months ahead of what comes to your house. Whatever reason. It's been that way for nearly ten years. What God is revealing right now, and He's showing, if you continue, I'm telling you this is a word that's coming to you, and God is going to challenge you to pour out that you have been clinging to and holding to as your peace. What does that look like to... to, to me, Pastor, I do not know. What are you clinging to? What is there in the back of your head that gives you a peace that I have X amount of dollars here and I've got X amount of dollars? Come on, somebody. I've got this career and that career. I've got this retirement built up and that retirement built up. I'm speaking to your house tonight that God is coming to challenge you in ways that will... Come on. Challenge you to pour out before Him like never before. But in that pouring out, He is set ready to reveal to you a peace like you have never known before. Gideon realized it was an angel of the Lord. It's all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar. It's a monumental moment. He builds an altar to the Lord that says Yahweh Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. The altar remains in the land to this day. The more you pour out, the more beyond your imagination He will fill you. Amen. He's calling the least. He's calling the few. He's calling a people to be used by God in a way that nothing else can take credit for except the sovereign power of Almighty. Amen. 
He's calling this man least of his tribe. Amen. Judges 6, 14. I don't know where we're at on that. So that should be the next one. There you go. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the many nights I'm sending you. The Lord getting replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I'm the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as you were fighting against one man. What's going on here is there's a region that is under attack. Just the same as from having in the Morristown, there's a region that's under attack. And God is calling a people, a few who might look as weak as anything out there. He's calling a people to go. Amen. And see a region delivered from the enemy. Regionally, it does look overwhelming. He says, how can I? But since year one in this call, he said, you're quit trying to be a church. You're a call, a call, a last day call, a call from Abingdon to Morristown, a regional call. Regionally, it looks overwhelming from a storefront position tonight, but it's never been our vision. Amen. It's never been our vision, nor is it now. It's always been his vision for us to take a region for the kingdom. But before we step out corporately to do that, I'm telling you, he's fixing to line you up personally like you've never known before. And you're going to be challenged in pouring out. Just like last week, the midweek conversation we talked about, the alabaster box, that year's worth was poured out in a moment. What does it look like at your house? I'm telling you, God is coming after that thing that you are clinging to that has been your peace that you have made an idol. Come on, somebody. I haven't made that an idol. I don't bow down and worship that. Is that your peace or is He your peace? You'll have to answer that question when whatever Holy Spirit comes to you with. And trust me, you'll never make a bad trade with Yahweh. When it's Him and when He's coming, amen, the whole deal right here, and I'm going to release you in this moment, the whole deal revolves around idols. What have we made idols? I had a peace and a security in something that God challenged me with over the last two weeks. And he said, pour it out. Pour it out for what? What was the pouring out for? It's for positioning and lining up for kingdom movement. Amen? I speak to you right now. If you're lining yourself up other than for something, for kingdom movement, listen to me. If you're locking yourself down and tying yourself down more and more and more to not be flexible for the kingdom movement that is on the, on the rise and on the midst right now, you're, in, you're, you're heading in the wrong direction. You're heading in the wrong direction. He says, get in, pour out. He says, get in, tear down the altars and the idols that is within your personal camp. What is God doing in our I'm just, I'm just exposing. What is God doing in Samantha and I's life right now? He is freeing us up and He is simplifying us like we have never seen before to the place of what? We know why. Because there's something big coming next. We cannot be locked down and tied down to what the world would put before us. We cannot be locked in and tied to of what the world would present to be our peace. No, we must be a people that says we're all in. We pour out because we got a regional problem. Amen. Jesus, when he goes to the cross, he pours himself out for what? A corporate issue for all of humanity. Amen. Amen. He pours himself out. In the same instance right here, it, that Gideon is willing to answer and willing to be moved and willing to, to face the, the personal challenge of moving and being positioned for what? For a corporate movement. 
This is not the time to get you and your family so tied up that you can't get to the secret place. This is not the time that you get your you and your family so tied up that you miss corporate gathering. This is not the time that you get your family so tied up that you cannot be available for kingdom. This is not the time. Come on. This is time for the cutting away. This is time for the burying of idols. This is the time for even what has been held as our peace to be poured out before God so He can reveal Himself as Yahweh Shalom, our peace like never before. Amen? He's got you. All throughout this particular biblical model, He says, I am with you. I am sending you. You will fight as in fighting with one man. I know you're just a few here tonight, but God is speaking to you. He desires to give you a new name, a new glory, and He desires to give you a victory in a region like no one's ever seen from that to the Morristown. Not even the largest of the people of God. What does He say? He says, take your men. you got too many warriors with you. He said, take it down, cut it down, keep cutting it down. So he doesn't say so that something else can create credit for it. He says so the people of God won't take credit for it. He says so my people won't boast within themselves. So that tells me, come on somebody. That tells me that God is in this moment is not interested in using the masses. He's extremely interested in using just a few that says no matter what you come after, I will pour out. I will pour out. Tonight the Lord speaks to you and says you have maxed out your harvest in your current position. You have maxed out. And before we attack this thing corporately, yes, we have, I feel Holy Spirit is speaking this week, we have maxed out our harvest in this current position, corporately. We're fixing to be a people on the move. But before that happens, listen to me, He's coming to you personally. He's coming to you as one person. He's coming to you, mighty hero. He's coming to you, call of God. He's coming to you, one He is sending. He's coming to you personally. And He says, that which you have been clinging to, that has been your peace. Pour it out. Because He desires to reveal Himself to you like never before. Stand with me all over this place. Come on. Father, we thank You. Jen, come back and play. Rizzo, come back and play. Come on. Y'all can pour it out on the instruments tonight. Lord, challenge you. Pour it out. Holy Spirit is coming to your home. He's coming to your life personally. You can ignore it and never become what God has called you to be. And be normal and go through emotion the rest of your life. And enjoy some sort of harvest deep in a wine dress. Or, amen. And I'm going to tell you that right now, that's where we all came from. Or you can pour out and allow Him to reveal to you that He is your peace, not that thing that He's coming after. Amen. This defies East Tennessee religion. Because how I'm speaking tonight should only in East Tennessee apply to a preacher. It should only apply to people that have, have answered the call of full-time ministry. But I debunk that in Jesus' name. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You are called leaders. This doesn't just apply to preachers. This doesn't just apply to evangelists tonight. This is you. Amen? This is you. You say, well, preachers are expected to pour out, cut loose, and just go ever how the Holy Spirit leads them and be used of God and be impactful to the kingdom. No, that's you. That's not just preachers, East Tennessee. No, that's 
you. I rebuke normal in this place right now in Jesus' name. I just I just want to I just want to come to church. I just want to no, I rebuke normal. I rebuke normal. That's not you. Come on, you you are people called all in. I'm gonna tell you, he'll just use a few if he needs to. Don't miss the harvest of your lifetime. Do not miss the harvest of your lifetime. Gideon was missing the harvest of his lifetime in his current position. And when God came, people of God, it's time to press in and allow the Holy Spirit to take our lives to another level. You, we cannot continue in this sustaining thing and just sustaining just a minimal harvest to try to get by. That's not what our lives are called to do. Our lives are called to impact a region from having a divorce now. Our lives are called to impact education. Our lives are, in, are called to impact the youth of this generation. Our, come on. Everybody looks to Jamie and Samantha for the next step of the vision. How about you take the next step of the vision? My God, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. What about you? What about you? What about you? When are you going to pour out? Come on, somebody. When are you going to finally say, Enough's enough, God. I will answer your call. I will be who you called me to be. Come on. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh. that holds that 
thing of security that holds that thing of peace that has been to your life. I pray tonight over you that it begins to fade away. That it does not become something that keeps you from pouring out before the Lord. I pray tonight that that thing, that luster, that glimmer, that thing that has sparked you over something that the enemy has tried to make an idol in your life, that it fades away. That it fades away. That it fades away. I don't know this to be what God will do in your life, so I'm not speaking this over you tonight. But Courtney's in the back room tonight teaching. God came to her almost a year ago and said, your career is your idol. You have made your career an idol. It wasn't easy for her, but she walked away from it. She said, I will not have an idol before you, Lord. And she was obedient. And the Lord has blessed that home and has kept that home. They have not looked back for a year. That's the kind of challenge that's coming to you. I'm telling you. Is He going to tell me to leave my job tomorrow? I have no idea what He's going to tell you. But He's going to begin to reveal that thing that has been peace to you. Come on. This is real, folks. This is not East Tennessee Church playing games. This is real deal. This thing's fixing to move, but He's going to move you personally before it moves corporately. Who will be among? Who will get fearful and go home? What did the Lord say to the 32,000 with Gideon? He said, tell them if they're afraid and they're timid to go on home. He was left with 22,000 left. He was left with 10,000. He said, there's still too many. And he began, to, he began to group them out. And eventually the Lord identified who was all in. Amen? The Lord identified with who? He identified who was all in. He corporately gathered them for a move in a region. And yes, it was Gideon and a hundred that sounded a blast. It was Gideon and a hundred and there was two other groups. And they sat and watched the confusion of the enemy as they destroyed themselves. And they took the land. That's what God does. If he needs one David to stand before a giant, that's what he will whittle it down to. If he needs to go from 32,000 to 300, that's what he'll do. If he looks upon all, all, all humanity, it says every thought is continually thought evil. But I've got a man named Noah that I can... That's what he'll do. That's what he'll do, folks. The church is eat up with idols. The church is serving all kind of things. They have not been obedient to the Lord, and that's why we're in a mess in this region. But God is calling the people, and He's coming to you personally. He's going to challenge you like you've never known before. Amen. It's coming. It's coming to your house. And I pray over you tonight. I pray over tonight that everything else fades away. Come on, can you receive that right now? Come on, receive that strength. You don't know exactly what He's fixing to show you in the days ahead. Come on, receive that right now. You don't know what He's fixing to show you in the days ahead. It's coming to your house, and you need strength. I need strength. He may be coming for even more in my house. Come on. We need strength. Can you receive strength tonight? Come on, I ain't been sent to play a church game tonight. Either you're in this thing or you're not. I know it's just a few here tonight, but it just takes two or three. It just takes two or three. Come on. He'll use one. Come on. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for those under the sound of my voice tonight. Lord, they're reaching out for strength to be able to answer and be obedient. Father, I know in this obedience in their lives that you're going to show them Yahweh Shalom. You're going to show them that you are the God of their peace. Lord, they're going to experience peace like they have never experienced before. They're going to have peace of mind. Lord, they're going to have peace of heart. They're going to have peace of movement. Lord, they're going to have peace tonight. You've shown us 
that. That's what you're going to do. You sent us to speak about Gideon tonight. Or there was a name change upon Gideon and he experienced a new glory. Father, a name change is coming and a new and deeper glory is coming. Hallelujah. 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 Father, I pray that you would pour out strength in this place on every vessel. Lord, every vessel under the sound of the voice tonight, by, by video tonight, Lord, that are receiving this word right now, Lord, I pray your strength, Heavenly Father, in their life to answer, to pour out, ever how you say pour out, to pour out that that which they've been holding to as their peace so you can be Yahweh Shalom in their lives. Father Gideon received a new name, Jerubbabel. Father, a new name is coming. I speak that over this people tonight. A new name is coming. Father, as Gideon experienced a new glory from the wine press to the mountain of victory. Lord, I speak, Father, and declare new victory and new glory over this people receiving this word tonight. Father, I pray now. I pray now that when you come for that thing personally, that personal position, Father, whatever it is that's keeping a people for having your kingdom first in all things, or whatever you're coming for, I pray that it would fade away right now. I pray that it begin to lose its fade right now. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Personal position, he's coming to your house, I'm telling you. He's coming to your house. You will answer or you will stay in a line for us. Come on. You can be sustained in a wine press, get it once. But you'll never experience the fullness of harvest that God has for you, the new glory, the new name. Come on. He's coming to your house. Father, bless your people now. Your hand of protection upon them, your provision, your mighty favor in their lives. But I pray strength upon our people as we walk this word this time. All the other things fade away. Come on, sing it. Oh, let all the other things fade away.
that you ever known is coming to your house in the pouring out. Everything you pour out in obedience to the Lord, He will fill with peace. I believe that with all of my heart. I'm witnessing it in my very life. Father, we love you. We thank you tonight. We thank you so much for all that you're doing. Father, I just keep hearing a people of God need to be flexible or they need to be able to move at notice. Father, they need to be able to be a part of movement at notice. At notice, Father, I pray that you would accomplish that in their lives. Nothing is worth more serving than you and your kingdom. Nothing. Father, bury the idols. Tear down the altars of idols. Tear down the altars of idols and idols in the camps of your people. Remove them. Let them be buried. Let them be buried. I pray this hour. We ask it in Jesus.